other things that did help also are cacao. Uh, it has uh, flavonols that that actually literally increase the brain blood flow and increase synapses and help that way. Now I'm going to go in just. I can't, I won't do it with every single one in terms of time, but I'd like to just talk about DHA in the brain. It's really important. First of all, I want to say I do not recommend DHA from fish or from krill because those tend to, uh, the waters are polluted. And uh, so there's a lot of pollution in those. Okay. So I like the DHA and EPA from yellow algae. Okay. The brand I use is Omega Zen. You can get it on my on the website, you know, uh, Dr. Cousins Global. But basically, DHA, and I want to be, I'm going to go through a list of things because it's so interesting to understand. It helps, obviously, brain cell regeneration. That's what we've been talking about. It helps cross the blood-brain barrier. And it supports brain cell integrity. Um, it specifically has been shown to decrease age-related neural inflammation. Remember, inflammation in the brain is a big problem. So we want to always keep decreasing it. And obviously, protects against brain shrinkage. And it creates healthy neuroglial cells because when they get all with age and tendency, they get overactive and they, they create a lot of brain inflammation. DHA builds the myelin. And the myelin is the sheath around the nerves. And DHA is important for cell maintenance. Um, and it actually activates, we call this the epigenetic part of the story. Okay, that protects tissues from, you know, brain deterioration. Okay, people with low DHA have smaller brains. That's the point I've been making all along. We need those oils. We need those fats in the brain. They have poor visual memory and less clear thinking. So DHA is important. Again, I, I, it, in essence, creates younger brains. And it helps with the fetal brain development. That's why the mothers get depleted because the baby takes it for its own. Okay. Um, breast cell infants, you know, with mothers that have high DHA, do better than DHA deficient. So uh, I always recommend with young mothers, because I kind of see a whole holistic range. So I have a whole protocol for a healthy, uh, healthy pregnancy as well as delivery. But DHA is a big role in terms of uh, the baby's getting proper enough DHA. Um, the DHA improved, tripled uh, the reading scores in kids. Um, so that's just kind of a, a little thing that, you know, it lengthens the telomeres. Telomeres are related to aging. They get shorter with age. It activates four times more memory, uh, saving stem cells, which produce the, the, the neurons. Okay. And uh, this, this is kind of like a, a a whole uh, really important thing to understand that DHA is that important. Um, now, I mentioned about strong muscles and brain development. And I wasn't joking before about, you know, my push-ups and things like that. But basically, they, they, they have actually found um, that physical exercise improves the brain health. Okay, uh, physical strength showed improved memory scores, and they measure it with those hand squeezers. You know, that's how they measure how, how well you're doing. 
So cognition is affected by foods, and you know the top foods I mentioned, but I'm going to mention I'm going to keep mentioning them to the end of the talk. Blueberries, celery, macadamia nuts, which I already mentioned, pecans, yes, broccoli, cauliflower. They all make a difference in promoting what we call neurogenesis. What is that? The ability to adapt and grow new brain cells. Okay. Um, and the muscle strength is a key. You could measure it. It's they measure it with the hand grip. Okay. And what they found that this is for people both younger than 55 and older than 55. So it applies to everyone. And they measure it by your brain grip. Interesting, interesting way to do it. Um, and the best was also was aerobic exercise for at least 20 minutes, I think at least four times a week, 20 minutes. I do at least that almost every day, but on Shabbat. Um, and uh, I do the breathing exercises. We do the yoga because you need that stretching, but also the hard physical things, push-ups and setups and a variety of things like that. It increases the size exercise of your hippocampal areas. Uh, so it's like, that's pretty important. So I, I don't want to, you know, we want to talk about nutrition, but I want to talk about what else, okay? And the thing about macadamia nuts and pecans is that they're higher in fat, okay? Lower in protein and carbs. Um, uh, obviously, we're talking about broccoli, cauliflower, all that's important for growing. And, and that has a, a chemical called 13C, which is very important for DNA repair. And then, of course, um, the blueberries. Everybody mentions blueberries, and they're really important. Uh, uh, lots of antioxidant, antioxidants and anti-inflammatory. And celery, which is really high. And, you know, most of your vitamins and proteins uh, and minerals. So it's a good one. Um, so we're looking at a variety of things, and I'm going to just go over what I call the, the top nutrients, but I just want to mention broad stroke. Cruciferous vegetables are very, very important for brain health, okay? And because the brain is always in self-repair, and these stimulate neural stem cells, which are your, what come from from which come neuron, neuron cells and development. And um, that brings a lot of, again, regeneration, uh, which is, of course, the name of the game of it. Uh, I'm not going to go into technical things, but sulforaphane, which we get with cruciferous vegetables, again, is extremely important. That's why sprouts are you know really important with broccoli sprouts. Um, and they have this anti-inflammatory effect. So, see, everything's kind of pretty clear. You know, we're looking at vegetables, cruciferous vegetables. I'm going to mention a, one supplement that doesn't get mentioned that often, and that's lithium orotate. That is not lithium carbonate that people use for manic compression. It's lithium orotate, and the dose is like 5 to 20 milligrams a day, depending. It blocks beta amyloid tangles, which is part of what we observe in Alzheimer's and plaque, okay? And it protects the healthy brain cells and uh, inc literally increases the gray matter. It literally has been shown to reverse brain shrinkage. Lithium orotate, okay? Please get that straight, okay? Um, it Enhances, enhances uh, DNA replication um, and increases up to 25% the uh, cell growth in the hippocampal area, where, where, which is where memory, clarity, cognition, discriminative thinking. Um, it, in eight out of 10 people, increases 
gray matter and promotes brain cell regeneration. Now, why do I say eight out of 10? Well, because we're all uniquely different. But eight out of 10 is a pretty big statement. But I do want people to get that we are uniquely different. So each person has to kind of develop their own in the bigger picture of things. Okay? It protects against the heavy metals, mercury, aluminum, cadmium, arsenic. I use other things to pull that out too, but I'm saying this simple thing with him, okay? Um, it improves the sp spatial memory uh, and has certain things that stimulate brain growth in it. Um, it restores the fast acting synapses uh, and helps repair damaged neurons. So this is just a little bit of, of things that we're talking about. Now, ginkgo, I mentioned before, there was a problem with the MAOB that blocks dopamine. Well, ginkgo inhibits uh, that MAO uh, uh, thing. And it also, ginkgo stimulates brain mitochondria and brain circulation. Um, I don't want to give dosages too much, but I'm giving you kind of an idea of things. Other things that are good are herpesin A, which uh, comes from Chinese club moss, uh, and it helps develop acetylcholine, which is so important for memory. And then we have curcumin, which comes, uh, uh, you know, um, comes out of turmeric. And then acetyl l carnitine that again combats cognitive decline. These are supplements, okay? Alpha lipoic acid, and again, protects it. Picogenol does improve memory and attention. Bacoba is a favorite one. I'm not as hot about Bacoba. Phosphatylserine is really, really important. Uh, and DMAE, and then herpesin A, which again stimulates acetylcholine. Now, um, we're about ready to go into Q&A, and I'm going to just mention choline is in there as something important, and vitamin D. Low vitamin D is not good for you in general, but it is very much a good antidote for dementia and Alzheimer's. I like the blood D to be at least 80. They say you're not vitamin D deficient if it's like above 30, but that's not exactly. Um, okay, so I've kind of gone through a, a variety of, of things here um, to give people a range just with diet, also with supplements, things change uh, in terms of what's available in the soil. But uh, I'm going to mention one last thing, vitamin B12. It is really, really, really important for brain function. It's harder for vegans to get B12. I tend to like to get my B12 because it has to be human active. Your blood serum may show it's normal, but that's not necessarily human active. So the human active B12, which can be measured by MMA, not mixed martial arts, MMA is methylmalonic acid test. It's a urine test, easy to do. And it will tell you if you have sufficient B12. And B12 helps with, again, brain degeneration uh, and brings clarity of mind um, and really slows brain atrophy. So those are kind of the overview. So in each generation, we're given the medicine we need for the world's repair and this holistic live food vegan. Okay, again, I'm focusing on the live food. I'm focusing on the vegan but in a way that builds cholesterol and is not carbohydrate heavy. So this holistic life with vegans is the wave of the present and of the future. And now we have time for questions and answers. We have 20 minutes. Okay. Thank, you. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Cousins. That was, that was a, a very uh, comprehensive presentation. So we're now going to begin our live Q&A.
uh, um, I'll be asking some questions as well as opening it up to the audience. But before we begin, we'd like to make sure that everyone knows how to connect with you and to also find your books. And also some people were asking about um, getting this PowerPoint presentation. I don't know if you have that available on your website. Uh, I don't really put my PowerPoints up on the website, but the way people can make contact with me and get my books, everything, is at Dr. Cousins Global. Okay, and that comes out of New Hampshire. We're here in Israel, and they handle everything. Uh, and people can get most of the supplements I mentioned. Not all of them. I'm working on some of them. Uh, but drcousins.com is an easy way. Second choice, treeoflife.mn.co is takes you to the website. Drcousins.com takes you to getting to the website and also. It can lead you to Dr. Cousins Global, where uh, where the supplements are supplied by a whole other company. 